Hi everybody, this is our second lesson on atomic and nuclear physics. We are still with the models of the atom and then today we are just going to look a little more on um, about Thompson's and Rutherford's model as well as look at the structure of the atom. So we learned yesterday about the Plump Dalton's model that the atom's indivisible and then about how Thomson discovered the electrons and, um, and about Rutherford's gold foil experiment. This, it's called the gold foil scattering experiment. So what, was, um, what Thomson's model couldn't explain was um, why is it that heated elements give out light? He couldn't explain that. And also that atoms show group similarity so that's how you get the construction of the periodic table, you know, how you have your groups. He couldn't really explain why they were similar. And, uh, and the thing, the defect with Rutherford's experiment was a lot of it was really good, very good. But according to Rutherford, he said that the electrons are actually orbiting the nucleus. Because, um, and so if electrons are orbiting the nucleus, orbiting means going around the nucleus, they're actually accelerating because they're going in a circle around the nucleus. So theoretically, they should be losing energy and collapsing into the nucleus, but this doesn't happen. So that's where Rutherford's experiment wasn't perfect. And the other thing also was Rutherford's um, model couldn't actually explain why heated elements give out light and that light is not white but it is colored of a particular so different elements give out different colored lights you know like neon lamps glow a particular color as opposed to sodium vapor lamps and so after Rutherford there was a student called Neil, Neil Bohr who came up with his pro proposed uh, proposal for what uh, what's happening to the structure of the atom but that's not part of our thing so we're going to move on so that was Rutherford's thing and we also need to know the reasoning why in Rutherford's um, structure why he used the different things so the you the reason he used the radium was because it gives out alpha particle why was it in a lead crucible because lead is unreactive so it doesn't react with the radium and then why did they have that collimator with the hole that is to allow the alpha particles to go straight through and not have it go all over the place because he needed to know and why was the gold foil only a few atoms thick why was it a foil and why was it not like a big block of gold that's because he wanted the alpha particles to go through the gold foil okay so if it was very thick then it wouldn't have worked why was the chamber evacuated because he didn't want the alpha particles to encounter anything else but only the gold foil he wanted to see he was studying the structure of gold atoms okay not the particles of air and also the thing with alpha particles is alpha particles steal because they're positively charged and alpha particles made up of two protons and two neutrons so they have an overall double positive charge and when they go through the air they ionize the air that in other words they steal the electrons from the air and become helium atoms so if and also alpha particles don't travel very far in air so those are the reasons that Rutherford removed the air from the evacuated chamber so that the alpha particles would go further and why did he have the zinc sulfide coating to study where the alpha particles were hitting the chamber to know like how many of them went straight through how many of them got deflected and how many of them got deflected backwards or reflected backwards okay so that is Rutherford's um, model and then that brings us to so what do you think what what's the atom like so the atom actually consists of so this is what we know so it consists of a central nucleus and the central nucleus is made up of two types of particles so you have the positively charged protons and you have the neutrons sorry that's my dog barking and you have the neutrons which have no charge okay the mass of a proton and the mass of a neutron are very similar the neutron is only very slightly heavier than the proton it's just slightly heavier and they all contained in the nucleus now you will learn next year a proton or a neutron is also referred to as a nucleon any any particle in the nucleus is called a nucleon okay so nucleon could be a proton or it could be 
a neutron. Now around this you have your outside the nucleus you have your electrons okay so you have your electrons outside the nucleus. Now there are some things that we need to know there is what's called the nucleon number or the mass number. This tells us how many protons and neutrons there are in the element in the atom okay so that is how we have let's say oxygen okay so you have the symbol for the element and this gives you the mass number is always written at the top the atomic number is the number of protons for a neutral atom it will be equal to the number of electrons and that defines the element so the moment this number changes you have another element you can't have the same element um, with different atomic numbers that's what defines the element okay and um, the other thing that we need to know sorry this was nucleon number so that's what it's called okay and then the other thing we just need to look at today is the term isotopes and you probably already come across this so isotopes are different forms of the same element all isotopes have the same number so they have the same element and because it's the same element they will all have the same atomic number which means that their number of protons is the same okay so what is different is that they have different mass numbers or nucleon numbers so if the number of protons is the same then that means they have different number of neutrons so the neutrons are different okay so I'm just going to mention some a few isotopes which might be interesting so just remember different forms of the same element because it's the same element the number of protons is the same so the atomic number is the same what's different is the number of neutrons so we have let's say let's take carbon I'm just writing C three times and carbon is an element which has six protons in the nucleus so all isotopes of carbon will have six protons in the nucleus but you have carbon 12 carbon 13 carbon 14 this means that this isotope of carbon has six protons and six neutrons this one's got six protons but seven neutrons because 13 minus 6 is 7 and this one's got six protons and eight neutrons so these are called isotopes of carbon Another interesting one is isotopes of hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen is the lightest of all elements. So this is your ordinary hydrogen which has just one proton in its nucleus and there's nothing else. So that's what we are familiar with. But there is, so this is your ordinary hydrogen. And then this one here has got a proton and a neutron. So there is a proton and a neutron in the nucleus and you've got your electron outside so this one is called deuterium the word deut means two okay and then this one is called tritium has got two neutrons and one proton in the nucleus they all have one electron because for a for a neutral atom it's got the same number of electrons as protons so they all have one proton in the nucleus so this one's got just one proton and one electron outside so those are um, the um, about the atom so what I'd like you to do once you've listened to my video is could you please read all of this page here which is page two everything's important and this one read about three or four or five times if you can because this table is so important it's about Rutherford's um, experiment it's about his evidence what he actually saw his reasoning why he reasoned out and the conclusion or the prediction of the structure of the atom he came with came to and then we've also done this page just the half of this page not this bit I've also covered here and once you've done that there is some work for you to do a couple more things so if you could work through this this is Rutherford's scattering experiment okay and I will put the answers up to this but this is quite straightforward and also 
this one here, Atom Model. So once you've finished listening to my first video and the second one, you should be in a position to do all these questions up to here. Okay, so bye for now.